Greetings, America. It's a, another Friday, the 15th of January, and obviously, as you can imagine, a lot's been going on. Uh, I am hoping to talk to my friend Hugh again. Uh, I got a hold of him yesterday, and apparently he's having some issues with uh, infrastructure improvements in his neighborhood. I think he said something to the effect that he believes they're laying new fiber optic cable, which could be interfering with his internet. So, hopefully we'll get around to that. Uh, I recently... Um, saw something on the internet where it was basically another meme and it outlined uh, Joe Biden's uh, political history. And again, I don't know where these numbers come from, but no disrespect to anybody, but it's like people don't know how to do math. Joe Biden was elected as a senator from Delaware in 1972. He took office in 1973. He served in office from 73 to 2008. In 2009, he took over as vice president for eight years. 36 years in the Senate, eight years as a vice president, that's 44 years in elected position. He was the youngest senator at the time, now he's about to become the oldest president once he is sworn into office. Um, within, that, within that timeline, this long laundry list of timelines, uh, the creator of this wanted to identify a few things. Um, where there was a quote by Joe Biden as saying, uh, racial jungle, integration, racial jungle. Bottom line is this. In the early 80s, I think it was 83, they were attempt, uh, several lawmakers were attempting to introduce some, uh, some legislation that would have bust minority students, I'm guessing predominantly black, based on the comment itself. Uh, but I'm minus any ethnicity identification, busing ethnically diverse students into what I'm assuming was a predominantly white school zone. The bottom line is you had um, what I'm assuming is non-white students living in an area where they're zoned specifically for a specific school. If you're a parent, you have children, you know all about this. My God. Sorry. You can't ignore the wife. And there we go. All right. So from what Biden had said in his own words when he was a senator at the time is he was more in favor of integrating neighborhoods, not some sort of forceful busing. What that had to do with the racial jungle, I think he had made a comment about something about tensions at the time. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Actually, this was in the this was in the 70s, so this would have been late 70s. Um, so, because of all that, uh, he was known as the Democrats' great uh, anti-busing crusader. Now, you have to understand, uh, even back in the 70s, you still had a lot of Southern Democrats that were like lineage of Confederate Democrats, where they still harbored certain thoughts, beliefs, and ideologies. Uh, pertaining to socio-political situations. Basically, they were pro-segregationists, all right? They were probably still politicians known as Dixiecrats who were completely in favor of segregation and lost in 1964 to when Lyndon Johnson decided, hey, we're going to integrate, but they're going to vote for us. Um, and then when you move, when you move forward... Uh, in 1983, he ran for president, and his his presidential campaign came to a halt because he was caught essentially plagiarizing. So he was caught using quotes from some uh, European politician without giving that politician credit. So he wasn't claiming them as his own words, but he wasn't giving credit for somebody else. So... Um, Essentially, his campaign had to come to an end. Uh, then in 1994, according to German Lopez from Vox, which I know Vox has got its history of being tremendously biased, essentially, Joe Biden was one of several lawmakers that was in favor of the 1994 crime bill. Uh, Joe Biden specifically had a large, uh, significant hand in writing it, plus he was also on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, Essentially, the bill was attempting to address the 70s, 80s, and early 90s crime, specific, specifically violent crime, and how to stem the flow of crime. And uh, he was also quoted as bragging about 
creating 60 new death penalties, uh, seven other pen 70 other penalties for something. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, 100,000 new cops and 125,000 new prison cells. Now, S Senator Cory Booker and Senator soon-to-be Vice President Kamala Harris both targeted him during the primaries when they were vying for who's going to be the nominee uh, over that 1994 crime bill's impact on the black community. The bill itself did not address any ethnic groups. It just addressed crime and high crime concentration areas. It didn't address, address ethnicities specifically at that time. Now, once again, subtext, you know, read between the lines. Um, if these statistically high crime areas also happen to be predominantly black, that's where Senator Booker and soon to be Vice President Kamala Harris were attempting to address the issue in the primaries where if you leave out language of ethnicity but then you insert you know well in these neighborhoods well those neighborhoods are black or those neighborhoods are hispanic oh are they i didn't realize i'm just looking at the data so again it's entirely up to you how you want to view that um your own your own confirmation bias your own socio-political bias will more than likely interpret how you want to absorb that information otherwise it just is what it is um, so the creator of this meme, if you will, was attempting to uh, acknowledge um, some of Joe Biden's legacy with regards to, I guess, perhaps his racial inequality, uh, so to speak. That seemed to be the general theme of it, was addressing specifically some of his anti-black uh, political uh, legacy. Because in 2008, he was also quoted as having said, Barack Obama is the first articulate and uh, something else, African-American. It happened. That was said. Um, and then in 2020, just last year, 16 days ago, he was also quoted as saying, if you, ain't black, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Uh, I may have misquoted that, but he did say it. Um, so I take that the general theme was within 44 years in office, he has not been good for the black community. Uh, that's what I'm guessing the theme was. At the end of the day, though, you know, it, 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 it goes back to that whole, what did they really mean? What was in their heart of hearts? Because you can use specific language to avoid identifying what you really mean in your soul, what you really mean in your heart. So I, I think the concept of that, that meme was attempting to state that in his heart of hearts, Joe Biden is a racist. Uh, deep down in his soul, he's a racist. Contextually speaking, I don't know that you can prove that. Um, you know, you, you, then you, you use the smell test, common sense. You know, some of the things he said, mm, mm, but you know, I'm all for being fair and objective. Again, it's not 47 years, 49 years, 50 years. It's 44 years in office. What I will say is this. The, the one thing that does come out of that, which I've said numerous times, between soon-to-be President Biden and any other elected official who's been in office 20, 30, 40 years, all I ever heard is, you know, over the last year was we have the solution, we have the fix. We're going to fix it. We're going to make America great. We're going to, you know, bring back unity. So if America was never united, if America has been systemically racist since its founding, if America has been broken in need of fixing, um, if America has been this imperfect thing, you know, for the last 240 plus years, if you've been in politics, specifically at the congressional or senatorial level, for 20, 30, 40, or more years, like soon to be President Biden. If you haven't fixed anything by now, if you haven't made improvements by now, then you're part of what is wrong with America. You're part of what makes America broken. You're part of what makes America racist. You're part of the problem. So to make these claims that you have the solutions, they're false.
they're false solutions. So I can at least agree with that premises. Um, moving beyond that, as far as what's going on right now, um, to kind of keep it relatively short and to the point, uh, so you have the entire Democratic Congressional Congress, that the entire Democratic Congress and 10 Republican congressmen and women who voted to impeach Trump uh, via the 25th Amendment, invoking the 25th Amendment and impeaching him again. So they did vote to impeach, but there's like a two or three part process to impeachment. <clears throat> Just because you agree to impeach him, all right, that technically means he's been impeached, but the goal is to remove from position, remove from power, remove from authority, whatever the case may be. That has yet to happen. Um, what I will agree is with certain languages, and I'll disagree with others. Some language suggests that this has been a witch hunt against Trump ever since he took office. That much is true. It's been a witch hunt this whole time. Um, whether you like him or not, you at least have to objectively agree that the Democratic Congress and the Democratic Senate has been 100% against Trump's presidency this whole time. So you can understand why people on the right can succumb to, to theories and beliefs that the election was stolen, the election was rigged, the election wasn't fair. I mean, you, you can at least you can at least give a little bit of leniency to and some understanding to why people may believe that. All right. I mean, if you believe in the numbers, if you believe that the the election was 100% fair, unfiddled with, everything was on the up and up, everything was 100% legit, then you have like what 81 million Americans vote for Joe Biden more than any other president in the United States and 74 million people voted for Trump still record-breaking numbers so between the two presidential candidates you had record-breaking numbers and you can't deny facts facts don't care about your feelings some of these battleground states some of these contested states like oh I don't know Pennsylvania had a hundred and thirteen percent voter turnout based on registered voters so you can at least concede a little bit of ground to why people who lean on the right side of politics may succumb to the belief in theory that it was not a fair election. Also, when you go, like I said previously, this this witch hunt for Trump. Um, essentially, what I've been able to gather, because if you immerse yourself in it, you eventually fall into that circle of hate and division and all that stuff. And I'm trying to pull back from that. Uh, you had certain congressional leaders accusing Trump of being directly responsible for what took place on the Capitol. Uh, and then they went as far as to accuse the rioters and whatnot of having murderous intent, that they were physically, there was pre premeditated murder. They were going there to kill lawmakers. I don't know how true that is, but they're also hold, they also want to hold Donald Trump directly responsible. What Ben Shapiro has said, I think, was the most eloquent. Did Donald Trump raise the temperature? Did he potentially add fuel to the fire? Sure. But did he use specific language in the form of giving directions and orders that explicitly led to the incitement of, it, of violence and the incitement of the mob mentality? And I go back to a previous video I've made. Previously, I was less inclined to believe that outside agitators were sabotaging left-leaning political demonstrations, political protests, that it was outside agitators that would come in, stir up the mob mentality, you know, stir up the riots and stir up the looting. Well, from people I know that were there, outside agitators were brought in to incite the mob for those who would fall for and were susceptible to mob mentality. And it was outside agitators that essentially did and started everything. Now, I will concede I will concede the truth. Some people may have been there for the protests that were susceptible to mob mentality, which is if you for if you bring in an already pre -con pre contrived mob and they're already there specifically for mob action, anybody else who is susceptible to acting with the mob uh, essentially that's what those agitators were there for. We're already a preconceived mob. We're going to go there and, and perform mob action and anybody else who is gullible and susceptible to mob to, to group think 
is going is going to partake in this mob action. And from what I understand, some of the some of the people that showed up with the intent of peacefully protesting got involved with the mob. That's going to happen on either side, left or right. It it just is what it is. Anybody who's taken a basic sociology course where you talk where you talk about mob rule, mob mentality, groupthink, stuff like that, it's going to happen. Um, I find it awkwardly odd that it, it turned out to be like this perfect chess move, this this ultimate checkmate, because we're days away from turnover, and you know it was the perfect storm to where it gave the Democrats all this opportunity. However, I will say the hypocrisy is disgusting. So I've already said this in a previous video, and I could I could continue to name the names, but it's it's just not worth it. The bottom line is you have Democrat you have Democrat elected leaders who have used exciteful or insightful, divisive, dangerous, and violent rhetoric. All right, whether it was explicitly violent, whether it was insightful, insightful and violent, or just plain divisive, you have elected Democrats using this language. So again, let's go back to the numbers: 74 million, 81 million. Uh, you have people basically accusing 74. You have Democrat elected people accusing 74 million people of being evil, of accusing 74 million people of needing to be purged or or reconditioned or whatnot. Uh, you have Democratic elected officials directly blaming Trump for orchestrating, directing, and controlling the mob that conduct that did what they did in the Capitol. Uh, they're blaming all of the deaths on Trump. There were five deaths. One DC Metro policeman and then four people that were not law enforcement uh, they were there for a reason so I have to I have to assume that they were demonstrators so you had four demonstrators that were killed by DC Metro okay DC Metro killed four demonstrators um, specifically with non-lethal munitions or less than lethal munitions uh, like the beanbag rounds to the head that can cause a subdural hematoma uh, so it, it's the use of language and Furthermore, when you have news media outlets that have people like Don Lemon, who are directly accusing 74 million people of being Nazis, of being KKK, uh, of being fascists, and so on and so forth, you, you, you between the Democratic, between the Democrat elected leaders and then left-leaning media, and whether it's the uh, opinion-based pundits or or fact-based anchors and whatnot, they're spinning a narrative that is dangerously on the precipice of civil war. And it's them, it's they, who are talking about civil war. Coincidence? Again, rewind. It was the Democratic Party that formed the Confederacy that succeeded from the Union, known as those southern states, that launched the first attack on the quote-unquote Union that begun the Civil War. The first attack may be verbal, in which case people who lean on the left, who are believing the hype, who are believing the rhetoric that 74 million Americans are KKK, are Nazis, are fascists, are, are just homophobes, xenophobes, racists, you know, anti-black, brown, yellow, you name it, um, First and foremost, that is the direct opposite of unity. So for all these politicians who've been preaching about now that Biden's elected, we've got to unify. We've got to preach unity. For four years, you've divided the country. You are directly responsible for dividing the country. You are directly responsible for spewing hate, nasty rhetoric, insightful stuff, and violence. Uh, and now all of a sudden that your chosen candidate is is has been elected now you want to unify um that's hypocrisy hypocrisy at its finest and then on top of it when you continue to use specific language and your news media outlets that seem to lean in your favor are using specific language you're the one stirring the pot for the next civil war because what's going to happen is somebody who listens to you somebody who believes you all right somebody who has been convinced by you that 74 million americans are prepping and prepared and ready to kill them they're gonna strike 
because of what you said. All right, they're going to act because of what you said, and you'll be directly responsible. Not like President Trump, you'll be directly responsible for stimulating the next civil war. And I feel a great sense of pity for the for the country, and I feel a great sense of pity for the person that does that. I sincerely hope it doesn't go that way, and I'll tell you why. I think the majority of us are not that involved. I think the majority of us are more concerned about earning a paycheck, paying our bills, raising our families, and living life. Okay, the majority of us just want to go on with our, you know, go on our way. All right. I, I believe that. But there are some of us like myself who spent 20 years of his life serving our country in the military. Uh, who, you know, I, I'm, I'm honestly at the point where it's like, I gave 20 years of my life for this country. I did nine deployments. Five of those were combat. Three to Iraq, two to Afghanistan. I've seen more than some, but less than others. I've done more than some, but less than others. No, I don't know my body count. All right, that's an absurd question. But again, I served a country. All right, I served a purpose. I supported and defended the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That was my oath. So it's hard not to see what's going on in this country. For years, during the early portion of the global war on terrorism, there was a thing where America's not at war, America's at the mall. So, you know, I, I think the majority of Americans want to go about their way. But you do have some of us who cannot, you know, because of whether it's our service or whatever, we can't turn a blind eye. We can't look away. All right. And it just is what it is. I sincerely hope it never gets to that point. But I'm, what I'm hoping for is objectivity. Even if you lean left on socio political issues, I'm hoping for objectivity. Even if you lean right on socio political issues, I'm hoping for objectivity. I'm hoping we can all start to see the forest through the trees, if you will. Um, and again, as I've said before, we need to demand and expect better of our elected leaders. They're supposed to serve us, not themselves. So that's all I got. Please let me know what you think. Participate in the conversation. Let's prove that we can be civil. Let's prove that we're not divided. Let's prove that we can disagree and yet still have a conversation and agree that we are human beings, we're Americans, and we're not going to demonize and dehuman each other, you know, dehumanize each other. Let's have the conversations. Uh, you know, if you like what I had to say, hit like. If you don't like it, hit don't like. But if you don't like it, get involved. Leave a comment. Participate. Uh, if you like these videos, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Other than that, that's all I got.